Um, Goedenacht allemaal. Um, welkom bij uh, deze u- uitzending. Ik zat uh, deze te kijken eerder op de avond. En ik werd echt zeer, zeer verdrietig. Um, ik zag dat deze show maar 623 weergaven heeft. En toen dacht ik, mijn god... Ik ben uh, bijna helemaal alleen op 26, 623 mensen na. Um, deze show geeft zulke heldere informatie. Waarvan ik denk dat het... <coughs> maar dan ben ik weer. Uh, dat het 100% klopt. En als dit 100% klopt... Dan... Ja, is dat geen leuke boodschap... Maar dat betekent niet dat ik hem niet wil verspreiden. Dus, um, ik hoop dat mensen meekijken en dat deze woorden uh, vruchtbare aarde vinden. Um, en dat mensen wil verspreiden um, zo snel mogelijk voordat het... Uh, dat het geen zin meer heeft. Er is altijd hoop. Um, God is in controle. Ook al lijkt het soms niet zo. Um, ik ga verder kijken. Ik hoop dat jullie meekijken. En uh, hier ook wat aan hebben. Continue on about uh, the, the involvement with the church. And where we're at. Uh, Julia, I have a lot of... Monday, we uh, have a lot to talk about. The uh, the issue has been brought up again about uh, New Age, and uh, so we're going to continue on about uh, the, the involvement with the church and where we're at. Uh, Julia, I have a lot of information. Um, the programming that we have received over the years has been uh, several fold in its attempt to mold and create the public in a social engineering environment that we're not capable of seeing the truth, we're we're not questioning those things that we see that in our spirit we know are right or wrong. And because of that, we have gotten to a stage, a point, where the church, the four walls, doesn't question doesn't bring up to the public, doesn't do anything to warn us of this new world order. The globalists, the Luciferians, the Illuminati, those of the occult, because that's what it is, have sold their souls. They've even been born into curse. Now, what do I mean by that? If you have parents that have dedicated you to Satan while you're in the womb, or that you were conceived during a ceremony that involved a sacrifice, that involved a blood ritual, that they then offer. Because we see in the Old Testament, we're not to have our children pass through the fire, we're not to to do things that would um, put them in a position that there was no way out. And so many that are in the Illuminati, many that are in these groups, also have corrupt DNA. They, their, their lineage goes all the way back to the Nephilim. And the, the information of reptilian or reptile or gray or hybrid or any of these keeps coming up. And, and so we have to ask ourselves, why do these subjects keep coming up? Why do... Why do 
whenever we connect the dots, whenever we investigate, does it keep pointing back to the same issue? So as Julie had pointed out in previous shows about the seminaries and, and its meaning and where it comes from, we have to then analyze that the churches today have been programmed, have been put into a position, uh, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so when you are able to control, to deceive, to manipulate, to counterfeit, to, to redirect, to alter, to taint, to corrupt the Word of God, and maybe do it one piece at a time, a little bit at a time, that over the past 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, we have a watered-down doctrine that we no longer see the power of God. We don't see healing. Uh, the, the miracles that, that used to take place are gone. And it's being replaced with kundalini spirits, replaced with theologies of pre-trib, uh, 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 of those that, that uh, they call themselves the frozen chosen, uh, that believe that God has chosen them, has nothing to do with free choice. So God chooses who, who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. These doctrines are straight from the pit of hell, and they're a lie. They have absolutely nothing to do with the Word of God. And, and so if if those that have come to Christ and never really were in the church and read the Bible by themselves and then finally go to a church, I keep hearing over and over again from them, uh, what are they preaching? Because that's not what I read. They, they, they read it without uh, any bias opinion, without any doctrine uh, infringed onto them. And so when they go to a church, they're absolutely... Um, disillusioned to how it's performed, how it's the order, and what they're teaching. Now, let me, let me set myself in, in, a, in, a, in a understanding of who I am. Okay, I, I have been doing deliverance now for quite some time. Some of you out there, maybe even longer. And because of that, I see day in and day out, the true spirit realm, the true tactics of the enemy to deceive, to kill and destroy God's people. And that includes the people that are not in Christ. Because you see, the devil hates us all. And though that we're all made in the image, that therefore puts everyone as a target. But some are used as tools, instruments of the devil to destroy others. Uh, I had a long talk today with, with uh, a couple of people about borderline personality disorder. And whenever I reach into my skull and pull out the information that I've obtained over the years on these disorders, these personality disorders, it becomes clear to me, clearer each time, and in, in a redefining of how Satan works. And, and any time that he can take... Uh, something and change it just a little bit, it no longer is what it wants. So if you take the Word of God and you alter and you change it a little bit, it now is a lie. See, there is no gray area with the Word of God. And so these doctrines that I just described earlier are a lie. And I was talking to a gentleman over the weekend who, who by the way, I'm going to be having on uh, some of you requested Bible studies. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this gentleman with me, and I'll announce his name later. Uh, we're going to start uh, this Tuesday, if he can make it, and we're, to, we're going to have a Bible study. So I'm not going to be teaching on the demonic. I'm not going to be doing uh, the, the other things that we normally do. This is going to be um, a, a theology of God's Word, spoken, revealed, and clarified. And, and as I was speaking with him, it became clear to me just how adverse he, adverse he was with the Word, and that he was able to run back and forth from one end to the other, 
But he also had the unique ability to align uh, scripture from uh, one uh, book to another, uh, whether it was in the Old Testament or the New, and show the, the differences and the similarities and those things of prophecy, how they've come to pass. Now, when you look at these doctrines of pre-trib and and Calvinism and and some and and you know some of the others that are out there, um, they can't do that because see, if they do that, then it exposes the lie. And when the lie is exposed, then, then the sham, the, the hoodwink is over with, the carpet bagging, because that's exactly what it is. And what is all that for? That is to take you out of relationship with God, to put you in a position that confuses you, that you rely on men behind the pulpit that are programmed. Some of them may be even SRA. Some of those are put in place. And, and you, you know what? If you think I'm nuts, okay, let's say that I'm nuts. But it doesn't mean I'm stupid. And anybody that can take a step back and see what's going on in the world needs to be able to comprehend something's not right. If we have so many churches on these street corners, everywhere out throughout the city, the Internet, all the stuff on TV, why are things such a mess? Because if God's word says that we've been given all power and all authority over the wiles of the devil, then why are we in perilous times? Why is tyranny from our own government one of the biggest issues we're facing right now? You see, taxes are a lie. The laws that, that, uh, that they've put out put us in positions to do things that contradict the word of God. That, that put us in a, a, a state of mind that we fear the government when, when that was never the, the true case of our, of our forefathers. See, they went through all of that with the king. Okay? Uh, England and, and, and uh, the, the United Kingdom, the, the, the Brits, okay, believe me, they had been so misplaced so long ago that they were using religion as a reason to conquer. Uh, the sun never set on, 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 on the British Empire. Uh, the Queen of England was this massive control freak. Uh, thousands, if not millions of people died in the name of, of the British Empire. And what did they do? It was tyranny. They would come and they would take. And now there are allies? Hmm. Well, that's interesting. See, they, they were trying to take us at one time and then gave up, but yet then we established Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, which really isn't under the United States uh, realm. And, and so we, we then have uh, the, the Federal Reserve, and, and then we've got all these things that, that really don't make any sense and, and contradict uh, our, our established doctrine from our forefathers, known as the Declaration of Independence, and, and, and various things that protect our rights, protect our gun rights, and they're all out the window. Now, how does that happen? If, if you cannot attack your assailant straight on, let's say, you, let's put two boxers in the ring, okay, and you make them equal, doesn't matter how much they pound on each other. No one's going down, okay? So now it's going to be a matter of intelligence to outthink the opponent, to, to make things appear as if the, the other one is winning, when in reality they're not, that, that then they stand down and you come in with a sucker punch or you come in with something that is totally unexpected. And that's exactly what the globalists have done to the United States. They knew they couldn't take us straight on. And so they infiltrated us. And they did it in parallel with the churches. And so the churches have been teaching us to stand down, Romans 13, uh, submit to the government. Okay, so, so this is the government 
that the, the laws that they put in now are allowing homosexuality, which we know bestiality is going to fall right behind it. We know that pedophile is coming right behind it, okay, the harming of children. We're already slaughtering children in the womb. We're already doing things that uh, is an abomination to the Lord. How does this happen? By replacing true men and women of God or tricking them, just like in the ring, where we make the other opponent think that they've either won, they've got the upper edge, and they stand down. To compromise who they are. To compromise the Word of God. Because the moment that you taint the Word of God, it is no longer the Word of God. No matter how good it sounds, no matter how good it looks on paper, no matter how nice and, and smiley face the preacher is, if he's lying to you, he's lying to you. And it is coming from the pit of hell. You say, Scott, well, gee, that sounds awful uh, harsh. I mean, my my preacher, my pastor, he's a nice guy. Do you think Satan came in like a jerk when he went into the garden? He played buddies. He was pals. He was smooth. He was a smooth operator when he came in. When, and, and I was talking to Julie today. How many of you went to go buy a car and left with something you didn't want? How many went to go buy a house or, or, or go to, to a furniture store or something and you had it in your mind what you wanted, but there's that pesky old salesman who sees you coming a mile away And he knows how to play you, he knows how to speak to you, and he convinces you and alters you to do something you didn't want to do. I I was mentioning to her that there was a gal that didn't even know how to drive a stick shift, and she goes to buy a new car, and she drives off the lot with a stick shift. Upset. Not what she wanted, but yet she was intimidated. She was just a, a, a little tiny thing. And, and here's these these men who bullied her into buying something she didn't want. And how many of you have been in church that you knew something was wrong and you wanted to say something, but you, you didn't? Because, you, because the last time you said something, there were ten loving Christians that beat you to dust. So my point is that No matter how nice someone seems, if what they're telling you does not line up with the Word of God, Mm -hmm. then you need to question who they are. (laughs) See, here's the thing. Personality disorders can be so deceptive because it, it becomes who they are. Now, who they are can be a liar. Can you say Bill Clinton? Can you say Hillary Clinton? Can you say Bush? They're liars. And they've been doing it so long, they're so good at it, they can convince you that what they're saying is truth, and you bite into it. Satan is the king of liars. He has been doing it for thousands of years, and he can take any human who's willing to sell their soul and through deceiving, lying, familiar spirits, he can set somebody up in a heartbeat to make them the perfect weapon to infiltrate the house of God. Because I'm telling you, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, if you're not doing deliverance in a church, if you're not having the love and the compassion for your fellow man, there is something wrong. And I'm not talking about the appearance of it. There there are times when things get really ugly and bad, and we find out who your friends are. How many of you have been thrown underneath the bus? I have. I raised my hand. I've been thrown underneath the bus. 
And, you know, and, and, in, and in my past, because of the way that I was, and, and even in a matter of survival, I did things I, I, I really regret. And I'm really sorry. But see, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because after a while, you get this conviction, you get this understanding that what you did was wrong, and it doesn't set right with you. And so you repent, and you no longer do that. So the question is, are, are the churches repenting? Right. See, their doctrines and their teachings are wrong. Okay. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, I just told you. When you have, again, somebody who is a new Christian, and let's say they're from another country, and they didn't have the churches like we have here, and they read the Bible, and I'm talking about read it, <laughs> line for line, word for word, front to back, and then turn around and go do it again. And then walk into a church, they don't even know where they're at. Because it's got nothing to do with what it says in Scripture. See, we've been programmed, we've been social engineered for so long that we think this is the way it is. And the government that we call the United States federal government has been taken over a long time ago. And it never really was for the people because of the establishment of the District Columbia, the way the Masons had set it up. Now, there, was a, there were good people, and, and they intended, and many of them, those good people were used right to their grave. <clears throat> but the devil's been right there in the details the whole time. So we've been used as a nation to go out and conquer other nations. World War I and World War II was intent. The Civil War was intent to do one thing, to spill blood, causing an abomination, to taint a territory and a land, to overthrow a government that was not willing to play ball with the Illuminati, and to <coughs> extort and to create a industry that makes people very rich. Because if you make bullets and you make band-aids, you make a lot of money off of war. And you also establish fear within the people oh, oh, oh. that the people are willing to give up their freedom for protection. When the whole thing's a false flag, when the whole thing's a lie and a facade in the first place. Okay? Now, can man himself do this? No. No. He can't. Mm -hmm. There has to be a spiritual influence. There has to be the, the ability to come from the spirit realm to give information, to empower, to be able to do things that are not human, to do things that are supernatural. <laughs> and now we've come to a Laodicean situation in our churches that we're allowing anything to go, any doctrine to come in. And there's even moves to remove Paul, to, to remove certain books out of, out of the canons. Because these contradict and, and expose the lie of the New World Order. And this whole thing about same-sex marriage and homosexuality and all this other garbage is, is, is Satan's way of corrupting the United States, corrupting the family, and corrupting the church. Because when you commit sins against the body, there is a whole other formation of demonic entities that come in and set up camp. When you surrender the temple of the Holy Spirit to perversion, then you basically are allowing the big boys, the mean, the really, really mean demons. All right. And you say, well, I didn't know there was a category of demons that were even meaner than others. Well, they're, they're all insane, they're all crazy, and they all want to kill us. But some have more power and ability and are smarter about it. See, that was one of the things about Hitler. Hitler relied on others to tell him the best way to annihilate masses of people. And those that did that 
seek the spirit realm through fallen angel technology to do it. And the same holds true today. We now have technology that is capable of, of making the Holocaust look like a cakewalk. And they will do it because we see on the Georgia Guy Stones that are only around 500,000 is the number they're looking for. And that's going to, going to be a selection of people, of young people. You and I, okay, I'm 59 years old. And, and, and they've already profiled me. And by the way, uh, this Windows 10, we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Uh, that is the beast right. system finally coming into your homes, though we have there have been other means. This is going to interact with NSA. Uh, to, in order to do what it does, the amount of computing power and memory and storage is massive. And who has that? The NSA. Who funded that? The taxpayer. In the, in the psych world, we call that passive suicide, where you have a behavior of a certain type that eventually leads to your death. So the, America has been performing passive suicide through our tax dollars because we never questioned the IRS. We didn't question uh, our presidents and what they were doing, and 9-11, all of that stuff has been for our demise. And people like myself have already gone over the age limit. I'm not capable of being reprogrammed. Uh, so those 500,000 are going to be a specific category of people, and, and they'll be young. That will be the workers. That will be the breeders. Because they will repopulate, but they'll repopulate in their own terms. And it's going to be through fallen angel technology. And if anyone thinks that I'm crazy, yeah. then you haven't done your homework. Because I can assure you, as, as the sun is going to rise tomorrow, that this is exactly what they've been doing, what they're doing now, and what they're going to continue to do. The question is, how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to implode within yourself because men's hearts will fail them for fear for those things coming upon the earth? Or are you going to be a warrior and draw the sword of the Spirit and charge forward against evil? I will. Because even though they're going to remove me, If you are a young parent, a young family, and you do not go along with their order, they will use that force against your children in order to cause you to, to, to cooperate. All right. Many of the politicians out there, by the way, that really weren't dirty <clears throat> were coerced. Oh, my God. There were things done to their family or told that what they would do to their family to make a vote go a certain way. And that means that when things happen like that at the top, it eventually trickles downhill. And that's what's going to be taking place now. Yeah. And one of the methods that is going to be used to monitor, to brainwash, and to control is going to be Windows 10. That was the plan from day one. You think that uh, Bill Gates uh, is a genius? You need to remember who his father was. You think Bill Gates, uh, st along with others, stumbled into this technology to become billionaires? No. You see, anyone of wealth and power and ability to, to bring technology into the public eye is a controlled environment. And it has been that way a very long time. And Bill Gates is a prime example of that. And now the final chess piece is being put down called Windows 10. And this interaction to the great computers, the Cray computers, which by the way means reptile, 
you'll notice that those computers, when they first designed them, they look like the Tower of Babel. And I know this because I worked for Motorola and we built the first chips for those things. Motorola was involved in microprocessing long before Intel came along. And their abilities and their technologies far exceeded anything that came out to the market for the public because they, they were using this technology for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so anything that you see now was already done a long time ago, but it just finally came to us. So anyways, Julie, uh, what do you think? Um, you've been listening. We talked a little bit today. Uh, what do you got to say? Um, I, one thing I said when we were talking about that Microsoft and all that, we were discussing that, and, and uh, I think I, I was trying to explain to you what I read about cell phones and, and things like that that brainwash are meant to brainwash people and um, they could track your habits to the point that they could actually send you something in the mail and you would have ordered it at that time anyway. I mean, I heard all this stuff was coming. But remember we were talking today about the um, how the, the cell phone, actually there's some kind of, I don't know what it is that comes out of your cell phone, but it literally is used as a tool to brainwash you and there's some type of energy, and I remember you sending me an article on that about not sleeping well. People have them too close to their bed or, or whatever. And um, I, it just uh, struck me today when you were talking about that that I thought, man, that is so strange. Because, again, all the things that, that, is, that are happening to people around the world that I read about and I hear about when it comes to technology affecting their brain and affecting how they think and feel, um, it's not happening to us. And I, I, it's just like every day, it's just more proof that God is honestly in my realm here because I don't, we don't suffer any of these things. And I keep reading about this stuff, and I know it's true because it's um, people who are complaining about all of these technologies and and all of these things that are put out in the air, and I and I said to you today, then why why aren't we brainwashed? How come we're not brainwashed? Everybody else is. And then I I, I posed the question to you today. I said, it, why is it that the churches, all these like the one that's not far from me, is full of all these people that are going right down that hippy dippy trail, and they're all into the I even heard a couple of people over there talking about how awesome the Pope was. And these are Baptists, you know. And uh, I asked you that today, and I said, why is it that the churches are full of people like this one here, and they don't see what I see? They don't even get it. They're like on another planet. And I, I said to you, I have to wonder if they even have the Holy Spirit. And remember what you said? What was it you said? Exactly, or something. Well, yeah, the um, the Holy Spirit convicts. The Holy Spirit brings life. The Holy Spirit brings us closer to the relationship with God. And if you're still dealing with a doctrine or theology that does not bring you close to God, then then the Holy Spirit is not present. <laughs> Yeah, that, that really, I mean, I, I honestly have had to do a lot of um, self-examination and just sitting and thinking and mulling this over, and we have a few listeners that have actually, oh, I know a few that are going through this right now that have been attending church for many years and they're still attending, but on the verge of walking away and have tried to speak to their pastor about certain things and tried to... They tried so hard to try to stir every opportunity, and they, you know, been, and and one of our listeners, he's a very gentle man. Very, you know, this is a person who would be very uh, kind and loving to his pastor and his pastor's wife. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And he's been sincerely concerned about them, and he's been met at every turn with like the hand, you know, talk to the hand. And so he's struggling right now, and he's spoken to me numerous times about that, about whether to leave or not, you know, and if life enjoys the 
and the fellowship of the church, and so that's kind of one thing they are folks were looking at. But this man is really struggling, and I I hear it, and when he when he writes me, I can hear it in his emails that and his text that he's very this is really really bothering him, and he's struggling as to whether to leave. And so I just want him to know that I hear him, and I and I have been just kind of putting that in my mind and seeing that there's more people than just him are having this problem. And I want you guys to know that I felt many of those feelings intensified when I had to walk away from Jehovah's Witnesses. And I had to start to realize that I had been lied to and that they were not of God. They were not of Jesus Christ and they were not the right religion. And, and so... I just want you to know that I know how you feel. And it's like everything you've ever known is starting to get turned on its head. And the people you trusted and thought were actually followers of Jesus Christ like you are. You just thought, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. See, where you're kind of going off, you're still going this way, and then there's a split in the road, and you're still going this way, and they're kind of veering off to the left. And as you're, you know, you're starting to see all these things and information and all this, this, you know, the New World Order agenda and all these things that are going on, this is causing you to kind of veer off that path a little bit and go, maybe this wasn't the right road after all. And they won't join you. They, they don't see it. So they're all on this road. And I know how you feel, and I want you to know that I feel for you. And I, you know, all I can tell you is that for me, I literally had to kind of close my eyes and jump. Because I was afraid to leave. I was scared to death that I might be going the wrong way. And all I could do is just, it's like, you know, they're standing up there and it's this big jump and everybody's jumping into the water below and they're so terrified to do it. And you just close your eyes and just jump, you know. And once, you're, once you've jumped, you can't go back. That's like how I had to do it. I literally had to just jump. Because if you stick around, you start looking and going, well, but you know, this guy over here. And you start trying to, um, that's when Satan goes, look, he's not leaving. He's just hanging around. Let's go ahead and, you know. So I feel for you, and I, and I totally understand. But I want you guys to know that some of the stuff that, that you're, that you're experiencing is just the infiltration of, of something that's been around in the religious world for thousands of years. It's not anything new. This stuff has been going on for thousands of years. This is stuff that was started way back in Babylon, Nimrod, Simulamus, all that stuff, it all goes back to there. And the Protestant churches are nothing but an extension of the Catholic Church. That's all they are. They're the daughters of the whore. If you look at what they're teaching, and you notice, one of the things that I want you guys to all remember is that when you see churches, I want to ask you, are the Christians being run by feelings? Is it go to church and we want to get a message, whether it's, you know, uh, an upbuilding, encouraging message, or, you know, is it about your feelings? You walk away feeling like, man, I just got convicted to be a little bit more, I need to look at myself a little bit differently. You know, I put myself down too much, and, and I, I, I really need to have a little more self-esteem, and I need to work on that, because, you know, Jesus just, he loves me so much, but I don't think that much of myself, and I really should start to see that, you know, I am somebody. Jesus said I'm somebody. I'm important, and I really need to live that. I just need to live it, and I need to think positive because, you know, when I'm just positive thinking, you can create things by positive thinking. You can create um, positive thoughts in your home and positive realities, and and your, your kids will be better, and, you know, when you have this positive thinking, and, and you're just, see, you see, this is what they're doing. It's about feelings, and it's about, then they kind of slip in the positive message, that little positive, and you know, you, 
you need to be positive in life because, you know, you can create an atmosphere of positive feelings in, in, a, in a positive environment for your family and your workspace. And, okay, that's completely new age. And I want you to look in the Bible and tell me where Jesus said for you to create your positive thinking and, and work on yourself and that you need to really know it's that, you know, God loves me and, and he and he died for me. So I really need to know who I am and, and you know, I'm I'm really somebody important. And I need to think positively. You, you, you see the little how they sneak it in there? Because it, Jesus did not say that. He said to deny yourself and pick up your cross. Pick up his cross, okay? Deny yourself. And that is one of the biggest problems that I have noticed in Christians. It's all about them. Now, if you said that, they'd say, no, I worked out the mission, you know, like one afternoon a week, and I just love people, and I, hold on a second. If I took everything you had away from you, everything you have, you can be in your house, but let's say I take all your house, I take your furniture, I take everything. Now tell me, are you the same person? Are you going to tell me you're going to be the same person you are right now? I guarantee you they're going to say, yes, I could. I really could take it away and watch them fall. You see, because they're not thinking their mindset is in Christ. Christ didn't even have a place to lay his head. He had no place to even sleep. He didn't know where he was going to eat. Judas had a fit when he was giving away all the money. People, these churches have got these people so trapped in a matrix where it revolves around themselves. And all this computer technology, Asana, all of this stuff, that's exactly what it is. Look, we have programmed you to think this way. Now, here comes Microsoft, Jan, and Corsana, and what are they going to do? They're going to tell you what to do. They're going to have, you see, it's not just in the church, and it's not just at home. It's not just in the schools. It's everywhere. This is an interactive system, man. Don't. You, you're you're going to have nine, you know, it's going to be all the time, man. You're going to be told what to do. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to know what you want before you even know you want it. And this is the stupidity of people on the planet that they're falling for this. Regina Dugan said, the head of DARPA said, we're going to have these little tattoos and everyone can get one. The kids are going to love it, especially if she goes, if nothing else, out of rebellion to their parents. Right? Their parents said they can't get a tattoo. And they're going to want, you know, just out of rebellion, they're going to want it. It's what she said. Promoting rebellion in children. And they're going to have all these different, you know, kinds of tattoos, a shark and, you know, a cross or whatever. All these different ones. And they're going to get it just out of rebellion to their parents. And you can see where, they're, where all this is going. They're going to program your kids. They're going to tell them, you want this. Your parents might say, no, but we're the government. We said it's okay. You just go ahead. And it's the same thing with the computers and with the churches. All one big, giant, huge matrix of conspiracy. Do you guys ever look, did you ever think that everything you know around you isn't true? Did you ever stop and look around? And think to yourself that everything that you see is actually a lie. Everything's a lie. Do you think you live on a planet, a round globe? You might want to check again. You might want to look into that. Because you don't. You might want to say, gee, how come all the Earth looks like the same picture every time they take it from outer space? But Neil deGrasse, uh, the head scientist at NASA, just said that the Earth, that the Earth was oblate. And then he said that it's a pear shape. But the pictures on NASA yet this, today were all with the, the same round earth. And he keeps saying that the earth has changed shape and it's pear shape now. But, but that's not the pictures that came in from the latest pictures today. It's the same one. That I, and then look down in the corner and it says CGI, computer generated image. I mean, we need to wake up, people. We're living in a matrix where Satan has complete control over everyone. If he says two plus two is five, that's what it is. 
and they'll find a way to justify why it's five. They're going to come up with some cockamamie, you know, story. I have read, I, I know you guys have never read these, and I don't recommend you do it because it's garbage. You don't put that in your mind, okay? But the, 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 the Theosophy by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, I, I invite all of you to get a pen and a piece of paper and write down some of these names, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, Alice Bailey. Alice Bailey, in her book, the, this woman says that Christians by the millions will have too bad for them, so that I heard her say it okay, in her little uh, interview. They have to die. They're either going to capitulate or they're going to die. And, it's, you know, you might look at it as sad, but it's really not sad. It's a necessary uh, move for us to evolve into the age of Aquarius. But we have to get rid of them because their negative energy is going to keep us from ascending into the next, the higher consciousness, the Christ consciousness. See, they're using Christ's name, Jesus Christ, Jesus, it, and they're going to keep us from that. We're going to have to get rid of them. You know, they're, they're going to be recycled. Their, you know, their souls will be recycled, and they'll come back as another person who will then, you know, get with the program. So that's, you know, that will be their karma. So you see, life is nothing. It's expendable in the New Age movement. You're nothing. You mean nothing. Obama today is now creating laws. You guys might want to tell your churches or warn them that uh, the government, he just petitioned the Congress, that the government needs to be able to appoint ministers, priests, and, and all of this to churches. It needs to be the government's responsibility because um, they're discriminating against homosexuals being ministers and women being priests in the Catholic Church, and, and uh, gay people being ministers. So now, he is now going after, and he said it was an all-out war on Christianity, and he's going to take it down. And he's going to change the law so that no one can even be a pastor unless he says so. They have to be licensed by the federal government, not the state, federal government. This is what he's doing now. This is his, he's got a whole new brain. It's like five laws, five different requirements. And it's all up to the federal government to decide if you get to be a pastor or a priest. And this is all because of that Lutheran, Missouri Synod, Lutheran Church. And they have a school there. And they're saying, no, we fired these people. They're not coming back. They're teachers in the school, and they're gay people. And we said, no, that can't be here. We have, we have policies against that. They signed those papers when they came to work here. They knew that was the truth. And now all of a sudden, because they made it legal in this, in this country, they're going to lose their job. Well, they knew the rules when they signed up to be a private school teacher at a private Christian school. But now, because of this, Obama wants to make Christianity completely illegal and that if you're going to be a pastor, a priest, or a minister, you have to go through him. It's all about federal government, micromanaging that. So that leaves a whole bunch of us that are ministers of the gospel that we're not recognized as anything. And we won't even be allowed to serve in any capacity as that because we're not federally licensed or appointed by the government. They're actually going to be appointments like the Catholic Church did back in uh, England way back when, when they appointed the archbishop. And they were the ones that, uh, in the Church of Rome, they appointed all these people. This is what it's all coming to. So we, we need to understand that micromanagement of every single thing, including your thoughts, is what they're doing. And this is the New Age thing. Do you know the New Age belief? Everybody's going to merge. And you guys are all going to think the same thing at the same time. Consciousness. We're all going to think the same feeling at the same time. It's like everybody's going to have this uh, elevated consciousness where we're, we're going to be floating on the same plane. I mean, it's ridiculous. But if you want to know how you get there, you start with positive self-thinking. Okay? Positive thought. We have to be positive. Now, a lot of you are going, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with positive self-esteem? What's wrong with some good, good self-esteem? Okay, let's put it in biblical terms. 
Jesus said, not one heart, <coughs> one person's heart is free of evil. See, everyone's heart was evil. And there's not one righteous. No, not one. Does that sound like, well, I need to have positive self-esteem. Okay? Jesus said that you were somebody because he died on the cross for you, but he didn't say you were that somebody. He told you that he loved you and you were like his child. But let's just don't let this get out of hand. Okay? Let's just don't take this too far. This is what the churches are doing. So as soon as you have these feel-good messages every Sunday, you walk in, and people are just leaving, and they're smiling. People should walk out crying. I don't see any tears on the people's faces over there across the road. They should be walking out of that place broken about their sin. Do you understand? It's not, it's not bad to be broken and to think you're, you're a low life. I, I felt that way when I came to Jesus. I was nothing but a piece of crap coming through the pig pen. That's what I was. I felt like the pig pen. You understand? And I deserve that because I look what I did. Okay? And he knows. It's not my fault. It wasn't my fault. I didn't ask to be born. I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask to be raised a Jehovah's Witness. I didn't ask for that. So that's why he died on the cross, because he said, they, it's not their fault. Nineveh, he said, we're not destroying them because there's people there and children that don't know me. So we're going to warn them first. If they repent, then we're, we're not, I'm not doing that. And Job was all mad about I mean, uh, Job was all mad about that. But you should smite them. They're awful people. You see, he knew it wasn't my fault or your fault. You're born that way. So he came, he died on the cross to cover you. Okay? But you, you, I mean, you cannot come to Jesus Christ with, well, I know I'm a pretty good person. I mean, you know, I'm worth Jesus saving. Well, yeah, you are. Because you're his child. But let's just bear in mind that you still look like the person that you were. You still look like that on one part of you. Your flesh is still no good. Okay? Your flesh is still sinful. It doesn't have that shiny new appearance. Okay? You're still sinful. So you need to remember where, whence you came and that you, you're not all that elevated, okay? Because you still sin and you still smell bad. It's just because of Jesus' blood that God the Father can even look at you. Because when he looks at you, he sees Jesus' blood covering you and not your own. Otherwise, you'd be dead if you stood in front of him. And that's where the unrighteous get judged in front of God the Father. They, he judges them. See, we get judged by Jesus. So all this positive self-talk and this self-esteem. I told one lady I was helping. She's borderline personality disorder. She's on 50 million drugs, and she's taking something for everything. And she's talking more about my self-esteem. And she goes to these psychiatrists, psychologists, and they have her doing this self-esteem handbook and working on her, 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 her lack of self-esteem and how she needs to really learn to love herself. And I told her, I said, you know what, I'm going to tell you what I think about that. If you would stop worrying about yourself and go down there to the food kitchen and work down there every week and start worrying about other people, that would take care of itself. You wouldn't feel like that anymore. There's nothing like seeing a bunch of people less fortunate than yourself, than yourself to kind of knock you in the head. And something happens when you become a servant. Jesus was very wise when he, when he became a servant, and he was very wise. And the reason he told us to become a servant is because did you know that when you serve other people, when you wash their feet and you humble yourself, did you know that you, are, you break free from chains and bonds of Satan, they fall off. Come, you're having a problem with this, this, and this, and when you are busy serving other people, and you think that these people think that you're doing so much for them, but yet when you when you when you're doing it, you'll start to realize from the get go, man, I'm the one coming down the the good end of this. I, I mean, I've learned more about myself just helping this lady than I knew about myself in my whole life. Good grief. You know, you start to see that, that while you're helping them, 
the, the chains that are binding you yourself are falling off. Jesus is taking them away. When you become obedient, you serve other people. He breaks those chains. And you, be, you can be delivered right there on the spot from things you didn't even realize when you're busy helping other people. It's amazing how Jesus does that. But I ask you if that ever happened to you because I noticed that when I started in deliverance and counseling and I, I noticed that things that I was still trying to kind of get past or I had problems in certain areas, but I felt kind of tormented about things, my parents don't speak to me or, you know, whatever, I noticed that those things were just absolutely removed from my inside. Did you find that to be true? Absolutely. I, uh, the, the, the more that, that you minister to others, the more love that God brings through you. And, and one of the things to remember is that those who have harmed us and, and hurt us in the past, that they're operating out of hurts and wounds. And, and the more that we understand that, the easier it is for us to forgive them. And so there's this ability that once, once you understand that, that a healing takes place within yourself. See, when, when we fully comprehend what's really going on in the spirit realm, what Satan's really doing, then we don't point the fingers at, at people. Now, you were mentioning <clears throat> conviction. Conviction isn't happening in the churches. There, there was one pastor that I, would, I loved going to when I was in Phoenix. Because every time I walked out of there, I felt dirty. And let, let me clarif clarify that. I understood that I was a sinner. I understood that there was more to get out of me. I understood that I had a ways to go. And it propelled me to move forward to cleanse even more. This is consecration to crucify the flesh, to, to get rid of the old man, see? Because that old man, is, it brings death. That old man continues to take us down like a ball and chain. And, and any time <clears throat> that you lose the, the, the thought that you've achieved a point where you don't need to go to the altar and wail, you see, if you strive to live, you will lose your life. We must be willing to die to self, to, to bring ourselves to a point that we're willing to get rid of all the old junk in us. Now, sometimes that's very difficult to do when, when we're demonized. We have demons of perversion, of lust, of addiction, of hatred, of unforgiveness, uh, even self-hatred. Because if you don't love yourself, and, and I'm not talking about the, the narcissistic type. I'm, I'm talking about for you to understand who you are. You have worth. God created you for a reason in these last days. And, and so to not understand who you are can be a blocking spirit can be something that was said to you while you were in the womb, something that keeps you from understanding who you are. And, and we've talked about that and had shows on that. Who are you? Well, I'm a creation of God. God is the father of spirits. He's placed a spirit in me that will live forever. And I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. I've done some things in my past that I'm not proud of. I have done things that uh, have hurt other people. And I've certainly done things that have hurt me because my sins allow demons to infiltrate me. 
I have done things that have given them legal right to do things to me that were terrifying, that were destructive, that stole my finances, that stole my marriage, that stole my businesses, stole my health. Yep. And now it's time to understand that this sin that is in us has been paid for, but we need to make the step forward. We need to knock on the door. We need to uh, we need to move forward. We need to pick up our cross. And and Julie, you and I were talking about we were doing you know the deliverances we've done. We've prayed for people, and and we. Um, I guess this is it for tonight. I'm sorry, I I have to stop this. Uh, I will continue this broadcast. Um, I want to bless this broadcast and. It's protected. It cannot be removed. It's under God's authority. Um, Scott just ended with the gospel. Um, uh, and that's wonderful. Um, I'm showing this because I'm worried because this show only got 623 hits and that's not very much people. So scotthensler.org, it's still there. I think it's protected. I think it has some truth to it. Listen to your hearts. Um, God bless you. And maybe um, see you later. I hope so. Um, in Holland, where I am, it's night. I cannot sleep. I had to show this. <clears throat> um, all right. Um, bye bye.